Joining me in the webinar uh, this evening, I have John Gurley, who's a project manager with TransLink, Andrew Couples, who is a project manager with Babcock, and Stacey Clements, who is a senior engineer with Arup. You will hear from each of the panelists during the webinar. By way of introduction, I wanted to give some key stats which demonstrate the important role which TransLink carries out every day across Northern Ireland. TransLink currently has 13,000 services in operation on a daily basis, and to keep this level of service operational, this involves maintaining 1,400 buses and trains, which cover around 44 million miles each year. The network includes over 80 bus and rail stations, as well as 8,000 park and ride spaces, which are operating very successfully across Northern Ireland. TransLink also looks after over 300 miles of railway track and over 1,600 civil structures, such as bridges and level crossings. Clearly ongoing maintenance works of the track and associated infrastructure are vital to maintain high safety standards and operational performance. The Department for Infrastructure are investing in significant projects across Belfast, and this includes the new Belfast Grand Central project, which is the redevelopment of the Great Victoria Street Railway Station, as well as the surrounding area. A redevelopment of York Gate Station to provide a new modern facility and the glider, which has been operating uh, since 2018, connecting East and West Belfast. Investment in the public transport network, such as these projects, is fundamental to supporting economic growth and also helps uh, support the shift away from car use to sustainable transport. This tackles climate change and improves air quality in the process. It is within this context that TransLink are taking forward the wider central area track renewal strategy in Belfast. And I will now pass over to John Gurley of TransLink, who will provide more detail on that strategy, as well as the lag injunction to your gate project. The central area yes. track renewal is a track renewal strategy in the centre of Belfast, which starts from the south side of Lanyon Place, adjacent to the gas works, running through to York Gate Station, and includes an additional 400 metres of track on the Bangor Line from Lagan Junction. During the course of the renewal, significant track renewal works will be required each year over the next five to six years to deliver the works in order of priority. The priority is to maintain operational performance, avoid backlog of renewals building up, which the supply chain would be unable to resource. The first element of the central area track renewal scheme was successfully carried out in 2020, and that was through that was the renewal of Lagan Junction. Phase two, which is the project that we're carrying out now, this element, this project location of this element of the central area track renewal scheme is from Lagan Junction, where the Lagan, where the Bangor Line meets the Belfast Line to the north side of York Gate Station over Dargan Bridge. This is a strategic part of Northern Ireland's railway network for both the Larne and the Northwest lines. I'll pass over to Stacey Clements from Arup, who will provide the project overview. Thank you, John. So yes, a bit of an overview of the project. Um, so it involves the renewal of approximately two and a half kilometers of track, and um, also the replacement of four sets of points introduction of new ballast and sleepers and the upgrade of signals and telecoms. And this work is needed in order to maintain high safety standards and also to ensure the ongoing operational performance of the, the track. Um, and these works on this project and across the rail network are needed to enhance and preserve the economic, social and environmental well-being in Northern Ireland. And through the design of new and improved track alignment, the quality and comfort of the passenger experience will be improved. And in renewing um, all these track components, we can keep the track operating at its design speed and avoid having to implement temporary speed restrictions, so reducing travel times. I might take over again the, the key facts for the project that involves 30 million of investment from the Department of Infrastructure, which includes for 2,500 metres of twin track renewal, 10,000 tonnes of new ballast, 2,700 new timber sleepers, 1,300 concrete sleepers, and during the course of the works will involve the, um, the um, employing 50 uh, 50 construction jobs. 
It also involves the replacement of 20 telephones, installation of new point seating systems, and four number SNC units to prevent uh, to, to prevent freezing, and replacement of 16 signal heads with new LED type units. I will pass over to Andrew Couples from Babcock, who will go through the construction timeline and details for the project. Thanks, John. Um, so in terms of the, the construction timeline then, uh, in, in August, we started our compound establishment. Um, and then going through September uh, and into October, we've started the preliminary night works. So carrying out surveys, um, and, and setting up the site ready for the main works. The main works then start towards the, the end of October, so with a, a, a 72 hour uh, weekend line closure where there'll be bus substitutions, um, and, and that's where we, we commence the, the main track works. We'll then have some, uh, some follow up works in through October, um, November, and into December. Uh, before we get on to the, the next main phase of the work, uh, where we shut the line again for nine days um, through Christmas and, and just beyond New Year. Uh, again, the full line will be closed at this point uh, and there'll be substitution bus services in place uh, operating. Um, we then continue that on for a, a further four 29-hour um, weekend closures. Uh, which will happen through through January and just into the first weekend of February, um, and that's where we will complete the the remainder of the, the the main track works. Then from from February through uh, through to Easter and slightly beyond, um, we'll, we will follow up some uh, some and complete the remainder of the the signal and works, and this will all be done on um, on on night times. So that so that we return to the to the train. In terms of the the impact of the works, uh, clearly we'll we'll look to to keep this to a minimum where, wherever possible. Um, I did mention that the train line will be will be closed between Yorkgate Station, Belfast Lanyon Place, uh, on on several several occasions. Um, Yorkgate Station will will also be be closed. Uh, over the Christmas period and and one uh, one weekend following on for after Christmas, um, but uh, but Yorkgate Station will be be uh, open for the remainder of the time. Uh, at, at these times, there will be a temporary um, a temporary timetable with bus bus substitutions um, where we're required, um, and then passengers with valid rail tickets will be able to travel on on scheduled Ulster bus services uh, 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 at these times. Um, we also will put in some mitigation measures uh, to, to ensure we minimise impact um, and disruption during the time. So, for example, noise attenuation, um, managing the times of deliveries uh, and, and appropriate management of the site compounds um, to, to try and try and minimise any noise disruption uh, as, as far as possible. In terms of the, the construction method, uh, the, the development of the of the compound areas um, has has commenced, uh, and we've set up hoarding, um, fencing uh, around the compounds, and put in some some site cabins. And then, in terms of the the renewal of the of the track itself, it will be done in stages along the route. Um, and each stage, we'll cut out the existing track, remove the the rail and sleepers. We'll then lay a, a layer of railway ballast, so the stone, um, underneath. Uh, and we will then compact that, that, that ballast. Once we've done that, we'll install new sleepers, uh, fit new rail, and then put some more ballast over the top of it, uh, and then do a final alignment and, and check the track afterwards um, and, and use a specialist uh, piece of, of, of rail, rail plant to make sure it's fully consolidated. Um, at four areas across the, the site, we'll be putting in new switch panels, so they're the, the panels that switch from one, rail, uh, one, one, one line to another. Uh, and they will be craned up from ground level, so they'll be craned sat at strategic points along the route, uh, lifting up these these large rail panels up onto up onto the bridge. Um, and then finally, we'll be be completing replacement of signalling and line side telephones. Uh, and again, these will be done 
on on night times um, so that we minimise the, the the disruption to 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 the track. The site compounds um, that that I mentioned that we were setting up, we have two main site compounds. Um, so one at Queensbridge Car Park, um, so that's at the lagging junction end of the job, um, and another one at uh, at York Street. Um, at the the York Gate station end of the job. So these will be be set up for the storage of plant and equipment, um, siting of temporary offices, uh, storage of materials, um, and uh, and and allowing us access up onto the track. There will be several other compound sites along the um, al along the route, predominantly on a on a short term ba short term basis, uh, including Scrabble Street, Tim Street, Gamble Street, and Nelson Street. Um, and, and these will be used particularly at the times when we're lifting up the SNC units using the, the, the cranes. Uh, and, and I think one of the key points is that we have, when siting these compounds, we have tried where possible to take into account the, the nearest noise sensitive properties and try and, uh, try and keep the, the compounds as far away as possible as we can um, for, from these, these, uh, these areas. On top of that, of course, uh, that there will be some disruption. Um, we've tried to mitigate that as 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 far as possible, um, and and you can see some of the, the sort of methods that we're using to to try and do that uh, highlighted here. So, for example, using engine covers uh, on on the plant to try and uh, try and reduce noise. We have um, hoarding up to try and try and uh, reduce the noise. Um, we're also uh, trying to utilise uh, solar panels um, where possible to reduce the, the use of, of generators um, and, and we'll be carrying out uh, regular audits uh, just to make sure that we are, um, we are putting these measures in place and they are being practised uh, on, on site. And then in terms of the what's completed so far, so we've carried out a lot of surveys on, on site already. Um, we have started uh, establishing our compounds, so um, people who, who are, who are travelling around the city will be able to see the, the compound areas, uh, both Bridge End and York Street in particular, um, where these have been, been fenced off and site cabins have, uh, have been put in, uh, and these sites are now, are now fully operational. Um, and then we've started uh, completing the, the, the localised civils works, uh, so that includes uh, putting in new cable containment, um, new foundations for cabinets um, and, and some distribution cubicles, uh, which are, are relatively minor civil works. Thanks for that, Andrew. Um, before we move on to address um, a few questions that have been raised with us, uh, I just wanted to outline some of the community engagement that we're carrying out alongside this, this major infrastructure project. We have issued uh, letters to individual properties in the vicinity of the works, both in August, advising of compound establishment, and in October um, this month, inviting attendance at, at public events. Further letters will be posted uh, in advance of the main works at Christmas and following our, our Halloween um, line closure as well. Uh, we've also briefed elected representatives for the area, both across North and East Belfast. And we've provided a presentation to Belfast City Council and um, to the City Growth and Regeneration Committee there. We have a dedicated web page um, at www.translink.co.uk forward slash CATR, which I'd referenced earlier. And this will be regularly updated uh, as the project progresses. We'll be making use of digital platforms, uh, the Translink accounts on social media, um, as well as this webinar to provide updates on the works. And importantly, we've set up a dedicated contractor control phone number to deal with any queries or complaints. And this number has been included in all communications to residents. Uh, further to that, as there will be a line closure and bus substitution in place, as we've heard, we'll ensure that information is placed in all key train stations, as, as well as announcements on trains to ensure passengers are well informed. So I suppose to sum up, we're making every effort to communicate the planned works and we remain available to talk to anyone who, who gets in touch with us. Um, so that's the end of our, of our presentation. At this stage, we're keen to deal with any questions that have been raised. 
So if any of the participants have any questions, please please type them in now and we'll address them. One issue that, that has been raised with us through through the course of the project and our engagement to date has been the importance of uh, mitigating noise as far as possible. Obviously, a, a major infrastructure project like this does have uh, some associated disruption. Um, so, Andrew, I wonder if I could bring you in at this point to reiterate some of the mitigation measures which Babcock, as the as the main contractor, will will be implementing. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, John. Um, so, the, there's there's probably two main parts to this. One is the the compound works, and one is the the, the works along the railway itself. So, in, in the compound. Um, I highlighted a couple of the, the the points already, but one of the one of the key focuses that we're looking at is is the the utilisation of uh, of solar power where possible um, in place of generators. So, um, using 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 solar panels for uh, for power in our cabins, um, so that we don't have generators running all the time. Um, in addition, we've got uh, we've got hoarding up to try and to try and um, minimise any noise that comes out of the the compounds. Um, we've also cited the compounds as far away as possible uh, as we as we can from noise sensitive properties. Um, and in terms of the the, the track itself, uh, again we, we've we've tried to to plan the the, the works uh, so that they cause minimum disruption. So there will be there will be night works, but we also have daytime works um, to to try and uh, to, to try and minimise the noise uh, through through the night time. And, uh, and 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 the other thing is we've planned it so that the works are are as transient as possible, so that where there is noise and disruption in in, in one area, um, hopefully that that won't last for too long at a time, um, before we move on uh, to to the next area. So there there's some of the the the, the key the key points. Um, I would maybe just refer people back if they want to to look at any of the other key points within the within the slide in terms of, uh, of of noise mitigation but but it is something that we'll we'll continue to to audit and have a look at as we as we go through the project okay thanks for that andrew um one last issue that's we, that's been raised with us here um unless unless anything else is raised while i'm speaking is it, just around how we'll keep uh, local residents informed of the works um i mentioned earlier in relation to community engagement that that's something that that, that TransLink have been very keen to incorporate into this project from the outset. Um, the way we will communicate to residents is, is predominantly through sending letters and leaflets out with, with information on the works and updates on progress. Um, we, we've already done that on a number of, of occasions, as I've mentioned. We've used GIS mapping to establish all properties which are 100 metres around the compound sites, as well as along the extent of, of the renewal area along the track that we're working on. Um, so that comes to about 1,200 properties, which we are we are leafleting with information on an ongoing basis. Um, so we'll continue to do that to keep people informed. We'll continue with our engagement with elected representatives, and um, we'll continue running events such as this webinar. We were in uh, Lanyon Place Station last week for a public event where we made ourselves available to talk to to residents. So if you just keep an eye on, on TransLink social media and on the project webpage. You, you will find out about further opportunities to engage with the project team, but importantly, we'll continue to write out to individual residents as well. Um, I think I should also mention that we, we will be supporting local community initiatives as well. So we're, we're, look, we're, we're working with local community groups um, to support initiatives, and we'll be working with local schools as well um, to see how we can, we can leave a, a positive legacy associated with this project uh, with the local communities that we're that we're operating alongside so that's an important part of what we do i think at this stage we'll there's no further questions coming in so i suppose that at this stage i'd like to thank all the panelists for for your input throughout the webinar and at the, the q a there at the end um and i think we'll draw the webinar to a close but before we do, I want to thank everyone who's taken the time to join us this evening, and I hope you find it an informative session. And to conclude, I would just again highlight that our project team is available to deal with any queries that you may have, and you can contact us through the number that's on the screen now. Thank you very much.